regarding uh, Congressman Alejano's uh, latest remarks regarding the President's comment on the Code of Conduct, he said uh, it is highly irresponsible not only for a President of a sovereign country, but also as a present dialogue coordinator between ASEAN and China to show a clear and submissive deference to Beijing regarding such sensitive matters as the Code of Conduct in he, the South China Sea. He is the one irresponsible because he's not even understanding what the President was saying. What the president was saying is he wants to know exactly the sentiments of China so that he can relay them to the members of the ASEAN because he is supposed to be the coordinator. So it's not for us, me as just the president of the Philippines, no. but as the head coordinator no. of the ASEAN China. That's why I said he, he's the one irresponsible for not understanding what the president is saying. Sir, follow up lang. Uh, you were there during the ASEAN-China summit. What is China's commitment to ASEAN that it will practice self-restraint in the South China Sea now that you are still uh, conducting or on negotiations for ASEAN? Group? From what I gather from what he said, he said that <clears throat> China's position would be to let navigation not unhampered, but should respect the rights of other countries to navigate. This is precisely why they have to, to meet and to draft this code of conduct so that others can also follow whatever code of conduct we have. In other words, they're open to that. Did any member state raise uh, China's continuous militarization and reclamation? In the no. no, nobody raised that. The, the focus was mostly on the code of conduct, sir. No, because there are so many concerns that affect the region. Terrorism, piracy, and then the economic aspect, cultural exchanges. There are so many. Was the trade war, sir, brought up for? No. No. Uh, so when you said uh, economic issues, what economic aspect was brought up during the meeting? Well, with respect to the exchanges between countries that will be mutually beneficial to all the members of the ASEAN. Including the Belt and Road Initiative? Including the what? Belt and Road Initiative. Yes, I think so, yes. That, that includes everything. So you expect the President to attend all the events tomorrow? Yes, he said so himself. He's resting now. The reason why he was skipping some events, I think three or four, was because he slept very late. His last courtesy call was at 3.30. So I suppose he, you know, you can't sleep immediately after that. So I assume he slept at 5 o'clock and he has to wake up at 7 in the morning because the first event was 8.30. So he really lacked sleep less than three hours. So he needed to rest. So in between those times that he was not attending, he was doing some power naps to get some energy. This is precisely why he did not also the gala dinner, because he wanted to sleep early. And an hour ago when I called up, because I wanted to go up, he was already sleeping. Sir, you mentioned that he was uh, working late into the night yesterday. The work that you were referring to, is there those courtesy calls or did he oh, both. find anything? He read, you know, this president reads, reads every report that every member of the cabinet submits to him. He reads documents. He reads books. He's a wide reader. And then there are also courtesy calls coming from people. Did the suggestion to skip the, some of the events came from him or from some of his son? No, he, he wanted to skip it because he wanted to sleep. Moreover, you know, the events that he did not attend to, he was only to read the joint statement by the ASEAN. And so he tasked the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. So all the 
Secretary Teddy Boy did was to read the statements. So he didn't miss anything. Sir, did he deliberately choose to attend the, the summits of uh, nations that he consider allies, like China, Russia, and Japan? No, he considers the three leaders who were there who addressed the members of the ASEAN very important. That's why he attended. How about the ones that he skipped? Oh, which one? Uh, uh, Australia, Australia, uh, South Korea, the, the working lunch, the RCEP. Yeah, the RCEP. Oh, that, it's just coincidental that he really wanted to sleep. He really wanted to rest. But tomorrow he will be at Tanik because he slept very early. So how about the APEC? How can he skip the I don't think so because uh, if he has rested tonight, then he should be energized by tomorrow. And we will be having a six-hour flight, which means another rest for all of us on the plane. Was the president feeling, I don't know, fatigued? No, he was sleep. He was feeling very sleepy, just like me, because I also slept very late. So all of us were feeling sleepy. Sir, I hate, uh, I, 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 I hate to ask you, but why did Malacanang take almost 12 hours to reply? You know why? <laughs> First, you were asking me, I was inside the bilateral meetings and events, and I take notes, I listen. I, I cannot respond. I, I, can, I saw your, your text messages, but I, I could not, because I had to craft a statement. And we start, I started uh, doing my work from 8.30 up to up to the gala dinner. So the only time I crafted that statement was the last event. This is the time I made my statement. Sir, can you share with us what uh, President Duterte uh, shared with Singapore Prime Minister Lee during the bilaterals? Because I think he mentioned something about um, important issues that need to be solved. With respect to the Singaporean <clears throat> Prime Minister, they talk about the the help that this Singapore Singapore country gave us during the typhoons, and then the president of Singapore was asking our president if he could look into the double taxation. Plus, he wanted that we increase flights so that it will improve the influx of tourists to the country as well as uh, trade relations because if you have only once or twice f flights in a day he said it will derail it will not be very successful in terms of trade relations on the Seacode, uh, the Chinese Premier mentioned the what? Seacode, the Code of Conduct in the South yes. The Chinese Premier mentioned that he wants the talks or the completion of the Seacode in three years. How does Malacanang view this? Is this too long for the code to be completed? Or My understanding there is you can do it within the three-year period. could be within a year or if it takes a little longer. Because, you know, I don't think it's, it's that easy because there are conflicting interests among the ASEAN members. And so they have to try to agree on certain mode. And I, I think that will take a long time. Just a follow-up, sir. Uh, the Chinese Premier also mentioned during the ASEAN-China summit, he urged uh, ASEAN member states to practice self-restraint in the disputed waterway. Did, did he also give a commitment like China will not, uh, will not continue the reclamation with, with the sending of military troops and building uh, military installations in the area? I think it's not only the ASEAN members, even China was also saying that, that all of us should have self-restraint with respect to our own claims on the island. But did they give that commitment, sir, that they will not uh, uh, have new reclamations and military? He did say so, but the fact that he, China is open to the code of conduct is, I think, a welcome development. 
because that is different from the previous stand of China that this is ours, nobody can do anything that we're not in favor. This time, let's talk. Sir, uh, overall, would you consider this a uh, productive summit? Oh, definitely, definitely. The fact alone that he came over and addressed the members of the ASEAN and made some <clears throat> commitments that they're willing to sit and talk on the mode of conduct in the navigation as well as over flight is already a sign that this summit has produced results. The fact alone that they're going to talk and discuss the mode of conduct in the sea. That's a step a big step forward, sir. It, that's already considered as a big step forward. Yes. Uh, in other words, you're creating the foundation for a code of conduct where all members of the ASEAN in this region will be complying. That will definitely reduce whatever conflicts they have and it will create a, an environment will, where the countries will be safe, secure and there will be peace in this region. Sir, China said, uh, I'll just go back to the earlier statement. Uh, China said that uh, it, uh, it hopes to complete the Code of Conduct within three years and uh, the, the Philippines um, uh, the, the, the Philippines will be leading the dialogue relations for the next three years, which is until 2021. So does this mean that China is expecting President Duterte to, you know, finalize the Code of Conduct? To lead the finalization of the Code of Conduct and, and within his... We do not know exactly why the Chinese Premier said that the Code of Conduct should be accomplished in three years. But what I'm thinking is that they know that there are so many areas of disagreements among the members of the ASEAN because there are so many claims in that particular island. So it will take really time. But if they will be able to agree, then I, three years would be long. But has the president expressed, say, any time, any timeline that he has in mind? <coughs> Does he think that the years is no, he didn't say any time, but, but he's happy that we're now talking with China, and China is willing to sit down. Sir, uh, can you say to, in terms of optics of the president, okay. Come again? in terms of optics or image of the president coming here, but skipping about half or a number of the events, what does it say about all two? Oh, as I said earlier, the, uh, the only thing that he missed was reading his statement, which our Secretary of Foreign Affairs did. There were, you know, when all of them read their statements, there is no discussion. They just read their prepared statements. So consider those events uh, consequential? Not, not that important as the other events that he attended to where there were open discussion between them like bilateral meetings with the Singapore president and where the three leaders address the ASEAN members. Sir, uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping will visit Manila next week. Are there major deals expected to be signed between the Philippines and China? None that I know, but I think his going over the Philippines would be a good opportunity to discuss certain issues that requires attention. So, sir, just a word on the, the excise tax. How exactly would that be? Uh, how, how would you go about with the uh, issuance of the MC? The Office of the Executive Secretary has already written Secretary Sani Dominguez that the President has approved the suspension of the excise tax. Will it be temporary, sir? 
Well, it depends on the conditions. The, the reason why we're suspending it because it's affecting precisely the economy, the inflation rate. Even though the Dubai crude oil prices are going down already, we will still suspend it. Too. The reason why we're suspending is precisely because of the rates of the oil that has affected our economy. Yeah, yeah, but recently it's <clears throat> been going down, so we are still firm of uh, suspending it, even though... The well, the fact is he has already made the instruction to suspend it, even as you said, it's going down. Mm -hmm. From his perception, it will help. Mm -hmm. He has listened to the suggestions of those concerned mm -hmm. sectors of our society. But will it not violate the train law? Because according to the train law, uh, we need an average of three months of uh, $80 per barrel to, uh, before we suspend it. But right now, it's still, uh, the rate is within what is required by law to suspend it. But we haven't reached yet the three month uh, uh, threshold yet. I don't know about that. I have to ask uh, Secretary Dominguez, but he said uh, he can. He, he was the one who recommended it. How about the revenue loss, sir? Because the, the Department of Finance has said that we will have some revenue loss, uh, so the President is just okay with it, considering that we have this building the program, and, uh, or if not, if not the infrastructure program, the non infra spending uh, programs will be affected. So. According to Secretary Sun, I was, uh, I was talking with him earlier, he said, Konti lang naman yun. So I don't think it will affect. And as I said earlier, the government has undertaken measures to curb its spending. So, palagay ko, kaya ang kaya. So, uh, is the President or Office of the President uh, planning to issue an executive order uh, to implement this? Or will the Department of Finance handle the implementation? Or which department will handle the implementation? I think the, the letter of the Executive Secretary is, is sufficient because that was by authority of the President. Yes, yes. So, there is no executive order that will be issued by the President? If there is one, I, I don't know yet. But I haven't talked to... Secretary Medellia. What I know is that he, he already directed the Department of Finance that the President has approved the suspension. Joseph, where's Joseph? Oh, mga may talong ka. Si Pia. Sana si Pia. Yanaba? Question, Pia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.